Big up Craig and thank you once again for the opportunity to be able to to contribute to this uh, with Harry Redknapp, obviously an absolute legend of the game and stuff. Um, but I'm here to talk about Palace. Now, um, last season, what a roller coaster ride it was. Um, we looked at the beginning of the season, we we're thinking, oh, we've just ended the previous season really well, FA Cup semi final and such. And um, we thought, you know what, let's just build on that. But it seemed like we didn't have the transfer window we should have had, personally. And it, it, I think it caught up with us um, from a very positive start, even though we had a difficult run of fixtures. Everything just went very, very flat and then um, it just went downhill very quickly. And it kind of culminated um, from just before the World Cup and then it's definitely after the World Cup. Now, the warning signs were there, obviously, before the World Cup. We had, um, for example, Decora getting sent off and we felt light whenever he was never around on the pitch. Like the, the the players that came in that didn't feel that they did a good enough job. And then after the World Cup, we had a January transfer window where we brought in two players late and then went on a crazy run of fixtures and our, our playing style just went to pot, you know. Uh, and then we had issues with uh, Vieira and um, Derry at the time. Um, went three games, no shots on target. Some of them no shots at all. You know, it was it just wasn't looking good, you know. Um, then obviously Vieira uh, lost his job. Some felt like he should have been given the, the type of games like the, the Leeds and the Leicester, for example, to see how he got on with those. Um, but then Roy came in and honestly, Roy did an amazing job, a fantastic job. Got us playing free-flowing football, played players in the right positions, uh, got Eze back into the starting lineup, and he was flourishing. You know, um, and then we ended the season very strong, um, finishing 11th. We finished above Chelsea, which was like, yo, <laughs> you know, it was a big deal for us. Um, but we're now obviously going into this new season with Roy again. Now, it, obviously, it's divided opinion, but I feel everyone's everyone's happy that Roy's there because we know that the players are happy with Roy and such. But I think the argument was really to do with the ambition of the club, like... Is this just a safety net sort of thing? Are we trying to progress? Shouldn't we take more risks if we want to progress? You know, then obviously seeing some clubs around us who are spending millions upon millions and we're not spending much at all, you know, because we've only just bought in Lerma, ex um, in for free as it stands. Then you've got the Wilf dilemma as well. He hasn't signed yet because obviously he's... He's not a player of Crystal Palace as it stands. We've given him a contract offer, but he's got contract offers elsewhere, including like Lazio, Fenerbahce, El Nazaire in the Saudi Pro League. So well, everything's all up in the air. So um, it's kind of like there's quiet optimism for next season, but I feel like the fan base feels it's always like one step forward, two steps back, you know, and we really want to be trying to not only just push into that whole top 10 bracket, we want to be pushing for some sort of European football soon. You know, it, it burns us, the fact that West Ham have won a, a trophy and obviously the, the, that team down South Brighton have, have made it into Europe and we're just always 12th place, you know. So it kind of, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, what is our ambition? What is our true ambition? Do we just want to stay in the league? And yes, our 11th year in the league upcoming, it's a great achievement. But we need something out of it. But yeah, thanks for listening in. I'm Rich from Eagle Eyed Football. And um, once again, Craig, appreciate you. And all the best for the season. At least, yeah, Roy went in, did a great job. Roy knows the game. Roy's top manager, been around, knows, you know, not, it's not rocket science. He goes in there, got them organised, um, done a lot of work with the team, probably on the train. He's bought, you know, he's got Ray Lewin with him and, who, who, you know, has been his right-hand man forever, really. But now they've gone in there and they've, they've got it, they've turned it round and it ain't rocket size. They've got the best out of the players and uh, they end up having a good end of season. But again, they need to recruit. But they've bought Lerma, who's a decent player from Bournemouth. You know, he's solid. Um, but then they're going to need, for, you know, a few more. But what they have got there, they've got a fantastic youth policy. It's a great catchment area, South London. All them kids there around that area, um, they've got some fantastic youth, youth, young players coming through. So that's the future of the club. 
keep nurturing the youngsters, give them the opportunity to play, and hopefully that, that, that's what they'll do.